past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izuku Midoriya, who he has revealed to the rest of the X Men about the, the truth about Hope Summers. She was born earlier today, and Midoriya, he did go to try and hunt her down. Try and find where she is to protect her. She is the first mutant born after M-Day. Whenever their population was almost totally destroyed. Now, with that, the X-Men, they immediately jumped into action. And Midoriya, he did tell them to stay away from this slaughterhouse after he discovered what was going on here. With that being said, him and the X-Men did discuss what to do with Hope Summers. Cable wants to take her back to his timeline, where he can train her and raise her to be somebody who can help restore faith in mutants. Now, along with that, Midoriya, he did have thoughts against this. However, after consulting it with the rest of the X-Men, they need to ease the world into the idea of mutants once again. And we do actually have today. It has been about one week, or let's say about two weeks actually, since Hope Summers has been sent to the future. And we do currently have Midoriya. In this amount of time, Midoriya has done a whole lot of things. He's helped Mina rebuild the Hellfire Club, along with actually making some improvements that she did quite thoroughly enjoy. Midoriya manipulated space a little bit inside the club so as to allow it to be a whole lot bigger. And people, they are stunned where they do walk inside. Along with that, Midoriya, he also has been spending some time with magic who, she did have a burning hatred for Midoriya. However, after he did basically explain what he was doing, and how he did actually regret killing Colossus, he did bring him back from the dead, which did put Midoriya on Magic's good side, as she did talk about how she does at least want a friend. Now, along with that, we do then have today. It's been two weeks in Midoriya. He is quite busy. He's currently in Avengers Tower. And he is talking with Tony Stark, War Machine, and a few other heroes. As they are all going over the events of what has happened. Now, Midoriya would reveal to them about Hope Summers and how she was born. This surprising Iron Man. Him asking about where is the child currently. Midoriya revealing that she's in the future with Cable. And that she's safe. Listen. I know exactly how humans would react. I saw it firsthand. Me and my fellow mutants, we made the choice. We sent her to the future to stay safe. I understand that that might sound bad coming from me, and not a lot of you probably do agree with my decision. However, if I do show you everything, then we can at least start to formulate a plan. Hmm? A plan? Yes. I want to see how the public would react widespread to the idea of mutants popping up again. If the response is good, we can reveal Hope Summer's existence. Whenever she does come back. And hopefully, in this time, 
no more mutants are born. If people discover where our species is jumping up again in numbers, that could be bad. One entire town was devastated and obliterated. It was, well, brutal to say the least. Even by my terms, no survivors. No one. Now, Tony Stark would actually ask Midori if he does think that this could be seen as, you know. Midori explained that he gets it. But at the same time, allow him to deliver the speech. People, they already don't have a very good public opinion on him. However, with the fact that it was revealed that him and the Avengers were working together, and that he secretly planned everything to take down this reality-bending threat, he's gotten some better press. Now, with that being said, a conference would be held under Tony Stark, and Midoriya would be there, as he does show the world the images that he gave Tony. Now, Jarvis, he recreated everything from memory, and Midoriya, he does tell the public that mutants, they, are something that people are afraid of. However, his species, they are nothing more than people. They have been ridiculed and persecuted against his entire life. And if he's going to be honest, he himself was tired of it at one point. Whenever he did come back to Earth, he had a plan. He wanted to take all of his mutant, well, kind, and leave the planet. However, he does see the way the world is. And currently, right now, as bad as it does sound, the world does need the mutants, along with their cousins, the Inhumans. Now, somebody does ask a question. Ask Midoriya about what he did. Midoriya trying to explain. Now, a lot of these questions are strange and either not to the topic or Midoriya and his past. Now, eventually, somebody does ask the question about it, asking if another mutant has been born, and if this is why the conference is being held. To which Midoriya would straight up just say no. He has fears about what people would do if another mutant is born. Now, the person to stare at Midoriya, as he just keeps a straight face. And eventually the conference would end. Now, Midoriya would then fly over to the Hellfire Club, and he would walk right in, Karashima letting him pass, as Midoriya would just say hey to him. Now, as Midoriya he does walk in, he does go straight to the bar. And he would talk to the bartender, Mystique, asking her how things have been. Hmm. Ah, busy, ever since I got my job back. Thanks for that, again. Hmm? Don't worry about it. Anyways, can I get a Midori ordering a drink? As Midori would look around and see this place. No. Midori would watch as you do have Jiro, who she's currently just standing there with some strange glowing thing in front of her. As her eyes, they're coursing with energy. Her then just bring up her hands and blasting music. Now, Midori would see that and think about how that's pretty cool. Now, Mystique would come back and tell Midoriya that here's his drink. However, the boss upstairs does want to talk with him. Now, Midoriya, he would head up there. As you do have Mina. Midoriya, actually walking upstairs and seeing her. Him asking her exactly what's up. Oh, you're here. Funny enough. Now, 
Mina, she is talking with a friend of hers. As Midori would see the girl from the house party. Mina asking Midori about Hope Summers. Midori just saying that she was born the other day, or two weeks ago. And she's with Cable in the future. Hmm. Shame. I was hoping I could ra help to raise her. Teach her some of the things I know. I could be a good influence on her, you know. <coughs> I doubt it. Mina, I hardly know you, and you really expect me to let you take care of a kid, let alone a baby? Hmm? Worth a shot. Ah, <sighs> anyways. They're a big business expense, you know. <laughs> I'm aware. Anyways, what's up? Well, I wanted to see how things are going on with you. You're quite interesting, you know. You made this place bigger, you rebuilt it in a day. I barely lost any of my customers, and in fact, more people are coming in. Especially because of your appearances now. So, I wanted to offer you a job. Hmm? <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. Hmm. Shame. You don't even know what it is yet. Mm, I could guess. You want me to be the entertainment for the night, am I right? Or the special VIP guest? <laughs> Not exactly. It was more or less you make an appearance here every once in a while or once a week, and I can give you some cash. Most people here, they would love to get your autograph. <laughs> That's new. Yeah, I'm aware. You're not used to it, are you? No. Anyways, I gotta go. I could, but right now I have to go to hell. And battle a few demons. <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or if you're serious. Now, the person with Mina does actually comment on this. Talking about how that's, well, the mutant guy, right? He's got to be serious. He's been to another planet in a different dimension, right? Hmm? What are you turning and seeing this girl? As? What are you? He's trying to point her out from somewhere. He feels like he's seen her before other than the house party. But he can't put his eye on it. Now. What are you? He does just leave. As? This blue-haired girl, she chooses to go back to talking with Mina. Now, after Midoriya does leave, he does head back to the manor, where him and Magic, they do fight off some demons, after going to a different dimension. And Midoriya, he does come back, and he does actually try to think. This stone in his hand... The one that he's been carrying with him for a while. It's very unorthodox. And at times he does feel like it's pulling somewhere. It's trying to lead him somewhere. Now, Midori is not really too sure. And at some times he's thought about using it again. Trying to find out where it wants him to go. And... It's quite peculiar. Now, Midoriya, he does just go to sit down, as he does hold a stone in one hand, him deciding to bring it up to his forehead and just hold it there for a minute. As Midoriya, he does open his eyes, and they do begin to shine blue. Now, Midoriya, he does just start to look up, as he's trying to use his abilities. And he's even trying to use his clairvoyance. Where would this take him if he does use it? Or let it go? Now. Midoriya, his eyes would widen. And he does seem to be quite intrigued. As he does see a picture in his head. The stone is one of six. And they seem to be quite powerful. They all come in different colors. And it's insane. 
Now, Midoriya, he does actually enjoy what he's doing. As he is trying to see more and more. And he does start to peer into a different timeline. Now, with that, Midoriya, he does eventually stop. After Jean Grey does come running outside, and she does see Midoriya. Who he is currently floating up in the air. His body leaning backwards as his head is just there. And the power he's emanating is insane. Now, she would run forwards and go to pull the stone off of Midoriya's forehead. Her being able to do so as she just let it go. And it does drop to the ground. As Midoriya, he does just sit there for a minute. And he's trying to piece it all together. As he does, bring his body back up straight and go to land. Turning around and going to pick up the stone with his power. Now, a lot of other X-Men do come running out. And ask Midori exactly, what is that? Hmm? I don't know exactly. As far as I'm aware, some guy in a mask gave it to me. I didn't think about it at the time, but he said it could help against Onslaught. And, well, I mean, it's insane. I, my powers, they go, they get stronger whenever I use this thing. I don't know how to describe it. Now, you do actually have Beast, who he would come walking forwards and tell Midoriya that that is no toy. And that he needs to put that in a secure location. Hmm. All right, all right, I get it. But what is this, Hank? That's, well, that's the Mind Stone. What? Yes, it's one of the Infinity Stones. Part of the gauntlet that Bendis can do anything. Wait, this is, oh man. Wait, but... If I find the other five, then I could restore the mutant population, bring people back, change everything. Now, everyone does look at Midoriya, and some of them, they do like Midoriya's plan. How they do, they do ask him if he would change anything else. To which Midoriya, he does just stand there and think about it for a second. Talking about how he doesn't know. He wants to see how people react. So far the idea of more mutants being born, it's already in people's heads. And they seem to be responding good to it, Roy would say. Hank, he would try to warn Midoriya of the dangers of these stones. The power they have is immense. And Midoriya, he needs to understand this. Now, as this conversation is going on, we do have one person who was watching everything in the background. We have Apocalypse. He's been watching how his children have all been acting. The mutants, they seem to be quite weak and frail right now. However, there is one of his children. There is one particular man he's seen fight and kill. But he lacks the willpower, he believes. Now, he knows that Midoriya, he used to be a previous villain. Along with the bloody battle he fought against the Sentry. This is all quite interesting. He wants to meet this boy and find out more about him. As he does go to walk into the Xavier Institute. Now, with that being said, we do then actually cut over to Avengers Tower, where Tony Stark is working on something. 
he knows that it's quite weird, or was at least a strange request. But T'Challa, he has helped and provided him with what he does need. And even he is aware of this idea Tony does have. It's just in case something happens. And Tony Stark, yeah. He needs to make sure that he has a plan for it. As he's building another weapon. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. Catch you guys in the next part.